Hi guys, how are we going? Um, next video for our Year 9 Chemistry. Um, in the last couple of videos, you would have heard me use the term isotopes. But what are isotopes? An isotope is a word that gets thrown around a lot in chemistry. Um, but what are they? So, you know, let's, let's have a look at what they are. So, really quickly, isotopes are just different versions of atoms um, and, and certain types of atoms so you know for carbon I might have three or four different types or versions of the carbon atom so that that's a pretty tricky concept to get your head around the fact that there might be more than one type of um, carbon atom so I want to use an analogy um, when it comes to cars so if I pull this off here we can see I've got three different versions or three different models of our Commodore. Everyone should know the Commodore, the great Aussie car that is no more. Um, so we've got the Commodore Evoke here, um, which is grey. We've got our Commodore SV6, which is the purple one here. And we've got the, you know, the cream of the crop, the Commodore HSV. Now the thing that makes them all Commodores is their distinct styling. They all look, even though they've got little different options on them, they all look the same. They're all still a Commodore. So if we were to have a look at the Commodore Evoke, you know, it's just got a CD player, it's got the normal V6 engine, and it's that dull grey colour. If we have a look at our SV6, well, it's got a touchscreen display and the radio and CD and Apple CarPlay, all that sort of stuff through the touchscreen. It's got a turbo engine and it's this nice purple colour. And then when we go to the top of the range, we've got our HSV. It's got the leather seats. It's got a V8 engine. It's that burnt orange colour. You know, it's got all the bells and whistles in it. Now, even though they're all different colours and they're all different versions and have all these different things, they're still a Holden Commodore. They still have the same type of styling, that same shape. So they're still a Commodore. So we have these three different models. So we'll push them across to the side here. Now I want to use this analogy um, to talk about the same thing but with atoms. I want you to now introduce you to three different versions of the carbon atom. Just like there were three different models of the Commodore, we've got three different models of the carbon atom. And there, and here's the drawings of each one. Um, and as you can see, we've got the nucleus with our red and um, blue dots, and then we've got the, um, the swirling lines around the outside which um, talk about the, the electron, but we don't need to worry about the electron at the moment. So let's have a look at um, these models of carbon. So just like we had our three models of the Commodore here, there was something that was, uh, that all of them had in common. All right. That distinctive styling. That's what made them a Commodore. The shape, the styling. That's what was made them a Commodore. So we've got our three different versions or three different models of carbon. And we've got carbon 12, carbon 13 and carbon 14. Now, Carbon-12, if we were to start counting up um, all of the particles within the nucleus, we could see I'm using the red dots for protons and the blue dots for the neutrons. Carbon-12 has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 protons and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 neutrons. So carbon-12, 6 protons, 6 neutrons. Carbon-13, on the other hand, Again, let's count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven neutrons. So carbon-13 still has the six protons, but has seven pro neutrons. And carbon-14, one, two, three, four, five, six protons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight neutrons. So, they're all still carbon. They're all still models of carbon because any carbon atom must have six protons. And as we can see, all of our different models here 
have six protons, which makes them a carbon atom. But what makes them different, just like we have the different um, options within our Commodores, the different option within our carbon atoms is the amount of neutrons. So to summarize, it doesn't really matter how many neutrons are in each one of these atoms, um, they're still a carbon atom. And that's because carbon is defined by how many protons are in its nucleus. So if we look up on the periodic table, we'd find carbon, um, and this is the symbol that we'd find, and this big six here says that that is its atomic number, and six relates to how many protons are in the atom. So if we have a look at our three models here, what we've got here, I've got six protons, I've got six protons, we've got six protons. All right, so because they've got six protons, they are a carbon atom. And what these, all these are just different versions. So an isotope is a different version of an atom. So all of these are just different versions of the carbon atom. Now let's have a look at these numbers here. Protons we know um, is the atomic number. Help if I could spell. All right, atomic number, and we've all got 666. Six, six. This number here, we look at how we've written carbon 12, carbon 13, carbon 14. This here is the mass number. And the mass number relates to how many protons and neutrons are in the nucleus. Remember, not just the neutrons, the protons and the neutrons. Now, in, a couple of the, in one of the other videos, you would have seen me write down some atoms uh, in scientific notation. So, wouldn't have been like what you see on the periodic table. Um, it was in scientific notation, uh, in isotope notation, I should say. Um, so, let's write down the isotope notation for each of these different types of carbon atoms. So, the first thing we need to do is find out what the symbol for carbon is, and as you know, I've Put on the screen a couple of times. If you go and look at it on the periodic table, carbon all right, is a capital C. So we'll start off with our capital C. All right. The next thing we need to do is carbon to be carbon has to have six protons. So we're going to put a six down the bottom here. All right. That six represents how many protons are in it. Then up the top here, we're going to put the mass number. So for carbon twelve, that's twelve. Six protons, six neutrons, twelve. All right, now if we're to do the same for carbon-13, capital C, 6 again because it's carbon. All right, if we were to add up the mass, uh, put the mass number in, that's going to be 13. I've got 6 protons, 7 neutrons. And finally, if we go to carbon-14, 6, C6, 6, 6 and 8 is 14. So that's carbon-14 in isotope notation. And now here's the thing. Carbon's not the only element um, to have multiple isotopes or multiple versions. Just about, just like in cars, in our Commodores um, and Fords and whatever else, they all have different models, different versions. But just about every single element has um, some form of isotope or another version of itself. Um, here's the calcium isotopes for instance. If you look up calcium on the periodic table, that's the type of symbol that you're going to get. Um, CA being calcium, 20 being the key number, being the atomic number, 20 meaning um, if I've got 20 protons, I'm in a calcium atom. So that's what we're going to see on the periodic table. And just like with carbon, um, you can vary the amount of neutrons, 20 here, 22, 23, 24, 26, 28. You can vary the amount of neutrons in an, in an atom, but if the protons stay the same, they are the same element. So let, let's have a look at, you know, calcium. We've got calcium 40, 42, 43, 44, 46, 48. They've all got 20 protons. All of them have got 20 protons. 20, 20, 20, 20. 20, 20. They've all got 20 protons, which means they're calcium. But they've got that varying amount of neutrons. And that's what makes them an isotope of calcium. 
Well, we've got 20 protons on calcium, but I've got these different numbers of neutrons. So just remembering that, you know, um, the amount of protons in an atom is what dictates the type of atom that it has. It can have some different types or different numbers of neutrons, which is what makes it an isotope. Now, what I'd like you to do is write in your books, I've got these six different um, calcium isotopes. I want you to write each of these six as in um, isotope notation in your workbook. You can show me those um, in class once you've got that done before you move on to the next video. Um, so just to review what we've spoken about today, about what are isotopes, all right? Atoms come in different versions, just like our cars, they come in different models, different versions. But what makes an atom a type of atom is the amount of protons in its nucleus. So all calcium atoms are going to have 20 protons, all carbon atoms are going to have 6 protons. But the different versions can have different numbers of neutrons within the nucleus. So they'll have different mass numbers. But they're still all, you know, these ones are still all calcium. I've all got, they've all got 20 protons. So you can take an atom and write it up in isotope notation where you put the atomic number at the bottom left. Um, let's have a look at that. So if we were to write the cal some calcium ones here, if I was to do calcium 48, I'd have to go to the periodic table. Here I am. Calcium is CA, so I get my... C, A, alright, my protons, which is my atomic number, go at the bottom left, so 20, and for instance, I'm going to do calcium 48, alright, 48 being the key, um, that's my mass number, so my protons of 20 plus 28 neutrons equals 48, and that is isotope notation for the calcium 48. So remember, I want you to finish off the other five in your workbook and bring that to me. Um, also, I need you to read um, chapter 6.2 in your uh, science quest book and answer some questions at the end of that chapter. Come and see me so I can tell you what questions I want answered um, and have all of that in your workbook before you go on to the next, um, the next video. In our next video, we're going to start looking at um, Nuclear, radi uh, nuclear radiation and nuclear decay. Um, we've got three videos on that. We've got three different types of nuclear decay um, and we'll learn about that in the next couple of videos. But you do need to get your head around the fact that there are different isotopes of different atoms and those different isotopes can make an atom unstable or unhappy, which leads to our nuclear radiation again, uh, or our nuclear decay. And again, we'll look at that in the next couple of videos. See you later for now.